Hello and welcome to the Leon Lush YouTube channel. Allow me to address the elephant in the room right off the bat. Gotta get this out of the way. If you're joining me after seeing last week's video that I did in this newer set I'm experimenting with, you know that I try to bring my A-game week after week, but sometimes life gets the better of me and that happened last week. I allowed this distracting shock white headphone cord to dangle across the front of my body just flapping in the breeze the entire video distracting you beautiful viewers from the things that actually matter on this channel which is the gorgeous, hilarious, and humble human being sitting right behind it. And boy, did you guys clap my cheeks about it in the comments. So I sat down with my team, we brainstormed, we fought about it, and we came up with a solution. Nani? All right, now that we've solved the great headphone cord disaster of 2020, let's talk about TikTok a little bit. I know it might seem like TikTok's the only thing people talk about on the internet anymore, but it can't be understated how culturally relevant and ubiquitous it has become, not only in the United States, but worldwide in just a few short years. So TikTok's been in the political news cycle for a while now because it's owned by a Chinese company called ByteDance, and they collect a bunch of user data from everyone that uses it, and ByteDance has direct ties to the Chinese Communist Party. Additionally, recently there was a scare because Donnie Trumpkin started tweeting about how he was talking about banning it in the United States shortly after it was banned in India a few weeks ago, which is, has a massive user base, and now you're talking about the US, so uh, naturally there was a, a massive freak out amongst avid TikTokers, especially people that have exclusively built their brand or their audience on TikTok, which is understandable. Sorry, I'm so fucking Now I'm no psychologist and just making my bed consistently in the morning is probably the biggest accomplishment I've had in the last 15 to 20 years. But I do enjoy conjecturing about what's going on at a macro level when social media apps like TikTok infiltrate our lives at such a massive scale. And we're gonna do that after a few words from different outfit Leon who's waiting patiently in the office behind me to talk about today's video sponsor, Raycon. When it comes to comfortable and sleek true wireless earbuds, Raycon continues to impress. At half the price of other premium brands, their everyday E25s sound good, they look good, they charge on the go, and they fit my ears comfortably. Now I've used a variety of earbuds in my day, but at this price point, Raycon continues to smash it. The bass response you get from the everyday E25s is impressive for an earbud this subtle, so you don't have to sacrifice your low-end thump for the convenience you get them both. You also get six hours of playtime, easy Bluetooth pairing, and a noise isolating fit that comes in multiple colors to choose from. Whether you're running to the beat of 80s dance music or you're on the go, they stay in your ear and they give you the sound you love while keeping you stylish. So if you're looking for an affordable pair of wireless earbuds, the search is over. And right now you can get 15% off an already great price if you use my link in the description below. That's 15% off if you go to buyraycon.com slash Leon Lush for your very own pair today. I appreciate you guys. So let's kick this off with a controversial tweet from uh, the god of gaming himself. The fuck you say to me, you little shit! <laughs> Ninja Tyler Blevins, arguably the most influential person in the space. He made this tweet just over a week ago. He said, I have deleted the TikTok app off all my devices. Hopefully a less intrusive company, data farming, that isn't owned by China can recreate the concept legally, such funny and amazing content on the app from influencers. Now I like Ninja, but I think sometimes he words tweets in a way that uh, leave it open to interpretation and he's not always getting the point across exactly the way he wants to. Now the irony in this is, as everybody knows at this point, every app developer, every big Silicon Valley company is collecting our data all the time. I think most of these big app developers, they give you that choice, you know, that checkbox you can hit where you can opt in to, to share your data, but you're never really looking into the fine print or what's going on, and it lulls us into this sense of security, like, well, I'm not gonna share my data usage, so they can't. Give me a break, dude. If you're participating in social media and the online culture, and you have one of these in your pocket 24 hours a day, seven days a week, you're about as anonymous as the sun in the middle of a desert. It's just the reality of life in the digital age, unless you're proactively keeping yourself off the grid, and I mean, that takes work. You're just having data collected about you all the time. And the commodification of this data is only becoming more and more prevalent. Everything we do, from the searches in our Google toolbar, 
to our location being pinged wherever we go, the GPS on our phone. All of this is being packaged up nicely and being bought and sold by these huge companies so they can better either market to us or build a better program. Every day, you and I, just through our normal actions, are giving these companies billions of data points that they can then build databases with and use to predict the actions we're gonna take before we actually take them. This isn't new news by any means, and it's honestly quite fascinating if you think about the scale at which they're doing this. And there are some people that are very apprehensive about it and don't like the idea of their actions being logged, but most people, myself included, I would say everyday people, they know about it kind of on the surface level, but we don't care enough to sacrifice the luxuries of the smartphone and these social media apps that we're all addicted to. So in the case of this Ninja tweet, a lot of people took it like, oh, Ninja thinks it's okay for US companies to data farm, but it's not okay for China to do For it. reference, let's try and understand just what kind of data TikTok is collecting. This is Senator Hawley as he tries to push legislation to get TikTok banned from all government devices. More teenagers are on TikTok now than use Facebook. It counts millions and millions and millions of Americans as users, but it is owned by a Chinese company that includes Chinese Communist Party members in leadership, and it is required under Chinese law to share user data with Beijing. TikTok has admitted that it has sent user data to China. To put it bluntly, this is a major security risk risk for the American people. And what kind of data is TikTok collecting as it runs on our phones? A heck of a lot more than you would think. So that's the main threat being posed here is that ByteDance, the owner of TikTok, is in bed with the Chinese Communist Party. And apparently, according to Senator Hawley, they're required to send data back to Beijing. Now, I'm not smart enough to know what this means on an individual level, like what China's going to do with my data. But I can see in like a government level why this might raise some security risks and why he's you know, lobbying to get the app banned from people that have access to, uh, you know, classified information, people that work for the government. Images, of course, that users post. But TikTok also collects information about the messages that you send, about the apps that you use, the other apps on your phone. It collects the sites that you visit. It collects your search history. It collects your keystrokes. It collects your location data. It stores all of this and maybe lots, lots more. Now, one thing that raised my eyebrow there was the collection of your keystroke patterns, which essentially means TikTok could be storing your password information from apps other than TikTok. You can see what you're typing on your phone. I also read something where it uh, collects your clipboard data. So for anyone who uses password managers like I do, I know a lot of people do, where you're constantly going into like one pass or last pass and you're copying your password over, they can collect all of those as well. The Pentagon, the Department of State, the Department of Homeland Security and the TSA have all banned their employees and service members from using TikTok on government devices. Now for the majority of TikTok users, you know what I'm saying, your 14 year old taking selfies and uploading choreographed dances to the renegade, I don't know what China's gonna do with that information that you know the United States and these other big companies aren't already doing with our information, but I do see at a government level where it makes sense. And that's what Senator Hawley's pushing for here, just restricting access to TikTok on government devices. Traditionally, if you work in a government job, your computer, your phones, they're already pretty heavily monitored anyways. If you have any sort of access to classified information, it only makes sense to not be able to download an app owned by you know a competing country uh, that you don't always get along with. So here's ABC a few days ago after Donnie Trumpkins made a few comments about the possibility about legislation to ban TikTok in the United States. Today, the Chinese-based social media app TikTok is back in the headlines. President Trump confirms that the United States is now considering banning the app in an interview with Gray Television. TikTok has more than a billion users worldwide and 175 million downloads in the US. Over a billion active users is a staggering number for the short time that TikTok Talk has been around. Now, I do understand it used to be Musical.ly, a lot of you know that, which was an American company before it got bought by ByteDance, I don't know, two to three years ago, and since then has really exploded. The app has been controversial for its origins in China and for its alleged intrusive data collection policies, but that hasn't slowed down its rising popularity both here and abroad. So for most people, TikTok is just an app where, where teens and a handful of older folks record videos of themselves dancing. So oh, come on, Lizzie, give it a little more credit than that. I know it was popularized by mostly talentless teenagers that became mega famous by lip syncing to popular songs after Musical.ly was bought by Bite dance. But since then, it's really cultivated a very lively community of people from all walks of life creating funny, 
creative 15 to 60 second pieces of art, if you'll allow me. Unfortunately, you know, it's just the kind of kids that live in the hype house uh, that are the face of the app to most of the general public. Explain how it goes from that to a potential national security threat. Is there a real danger here? Yeah, one, one cybersecurity expert described TikTok as a data collection app masquerading as a social media app and went wow. so far as to call it outright evil. Wow. So TikTok collects everything on your phone, everything about the hardware. Oh my God, wow, you could literally say that about every social media app that we use. And went so far as to call it outright evil. Listen, I can handle the data farming. I'm used to that, all right? But for a cybersecurity expert to go as far as to call it outright evil, not in this Christian household. There's a line and they just crossed it. Time to delete TikTok. TikTok collects everything on your phone, everything about the hardware, who you talk to, when you talk to them, where, where you go on websites, uh, everything that's on that phone to include where you are every 30 seconds is encrypted and sent somewhere back to that company's, head, company's headquarters. And because we know that by law, Chinese companies, which TikTok is, have to cooperate with Chinese intelligence services, there's real concern around the world, not just in the US, that TikTok can be a tool of the Chinese government. Now, I don't know the specifics. He's making it sound like TikTok collects a lot more data than like a normal social media app would. The obvious issue here, um, at least for most of the people debating this, is the fact that it's communist China that is allegedly getting the data from all of the American users sent back to them that they can then use to do something grave and nefarious. So Steve, let me put you on the spot here and just ask, is this something that you do not have on your phone or that you would warn <laughs> a, a family member from having? Come on, Lizzie. Look at Steve. Of course he has it. The second that pink tie comes off, the Yeezys go on and he's doing duets with Charlie D'Amelio. He has 3.6 million followers as we speak. Check him out. I, 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 some of my children do have it and I, I'm going to have a little talk with them about what kind of data they're giving up. Hey, honey, would you mind coming over here for just a sec? Yeah. Nah, it'll only be a second, I promise. Yeah. Hi, sweetie. I love you too. I know. Here, listen, I know you're only 12, sweetheart, but I think it's really important we have the talk uh, about what kind of data you're giving the Communist Chinese Party every time you upload one of your viral TikTok dances. What am I talking about? <laughs> I, was just, I was afraid you might say that. You know, it's, it's a little complicated. So here, take a seat. Let's get into this for a while. Kids do not give a shit, bro. Okay, all they care about is, you know, positive affirmation from strangers on the internet and going viral and clout. You could probably tell them that every time they uploaded to TikTok, a small puppy on the other side of the world was killed, uh, and they, they, they still would. Kids are kids, you know? They grew up with social media. They know that privacy doesn't exist anymore. It's the boomers that are super apprehensive, you know what I'm saying? They, they read a news article online about TikTok being owned by a Chinese company, and they think, oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, my privacy, oh, my security. Oh. You want my daddy, you're gonna have to pry it from my cold dead hands, China. Not today, TikTok, delete it. <laughs> They post to Facebook from the phone in their pocket that tracks every single move that they make all day long. We know that lots of apps actually, you, you have to give up data. If, a, if an app is free, one way you're going to pay for it. You're either going to put money down towards it or you're going to give them your personal data. But in this case, because we know that a, a uh, hostile intelligence agency, hostile to the United States, hostile to Australia uh, and India even, just kicked the, uh, the app out of India. 600 million users in, in uh, India no longer have that app and TikTok will lose six billion dollars in revenue wow. so it's a global phenomenon but it Yikes. means that you have to give up lots of information and you're giving it up to the Chinese intelligence services you know I make jokes about it but I don't think it should be taken lightly obviously you know we live in a time where information warfare exists like data at scale can be weaponized for a certain agenda or a certain regime we've seen it with Russia and I'm sure it's happening all the time, all over the place. I mean, traditionally, you think of war as like boots on the ground, right? But in today's digital age, man, with social media, like cyber warfare, information warfare is happening every single day, all the time, all around us. You know, I do my best to try and stay informed, to think critically, to make sure I'm not taking everything at face value and getting information from multiple sources all over the place because it is so, so difficult to know who to trust, to know what to trust today. And frankly, it's kind of, it's, I don't, I don't wanna call it scary, it's just unsettling. 
just how things have progressed over the last 10 to 20 years in this complete distrust in the media, not knowing what a reliable source of information is. I mean, it's no secret why someone like Rogan has such a insanely large audience because he's looked at as kind of this, you know, unbiased everyday guy. Uh, you know, and I know he gets shit sometimes, but that's what I think a lot of people are yearning for because it's so difficult to know if you're getting your news and your information from a source that is unbiased or that is accurate without some sort of agenda to push. So with so many users here in the U.S., is the damage already done when it comes to data collection? And, and do you see any free speech concerns with banning a social media app like this? Yeah, some people are going to say, look, I'll do whatever I want. It's my personal data. And they are, you know, to, to each their own. And if they want to give up their personal data, certainly they can. But I think that there's going to be pressure because there is bipartisan support on the Hill to rein this app in and limit the amount of information that at least goes back to China uh, and make sure that there is some sort of privacy on people's personal use. It's scary. People are worried about it because of its power. And it's been downloaded so many times and is so popular. So is TikTok just Chinese spyware? being used to accumulate data that's someday going to be used against us? I have no way to make that determination. I do think it's okay to be, you know, apprehensive about what data we're giving up. As far as you and I are concerned, who knows? We'll have to make that decision for ourselves. But, like, what's China going to do with Howie Mandel's information? <laughs> Hold up. Pause. Yeah. Actually, on second thought, if China was able to hack into the cell network in the United States and just distribute a Howie Mandel TikTok video to every person with a cell phone at the same time, America surely would go up in flames. But now for the important question, what about Gen Z though? What are they gonna do? They don't give a shit about data. They don't give a shit about China. They only care about uploading viral TikToks, doing the renegade. If you take that away from them, if you all of a sudden block access to TikTok on every phone in the United States, there is going to be a massive uprising of prepubescent teenagers that I think will be the one thing that overthrows the government. I've been crying about this for like an hour because it's just so like, Pathetic that like she just comes in and like almost passes like she's so close to passing me and everybody's reminding me that she's gonna pass me <laughs> and I just want to oh, prove no. this bitch that I am better than her because I am so e fucking Laverne and I oh. am literally the star of TikTok. Oh, the star. And TikTok is putting me down and boosting her up and I'm about to go to TikTok headquarters and strangle their necks. Wow. <laughs> Now, admittedly, this is not a clip of her reacting to news of TikTok possibly being shut down. This is from a few months ago, and this is a clip of this TikToker, Zoe Laverne, uh, the most popular at the time, reacting to the, the, the idea of Charlie D'Amelio passing her in followers. Now, if you wanted to sum up something that embodied entitlement in 15 seconds, all you'd have to do is show a clip of this video. And I don't want to throw shade, you know, she's a young girl dealing with her own demons, I'm sure. But this just gives you an idea of how important these vanity metrics are to these young kids on these social media apps, specifically TikTok in this case. Like, I don't want to be known as like, oh, like, Zoe Laverne is nothing now. Like, I don't want them to call me irrelevant. Like, I don't want to be told that I'm irrelevant. Now, this may be an extreme example, but you can see the fear and the devastation in her eyes at the sheer notion of the possibility of her becoming irrelevant, right? In this case, it's literally just her losing the number one spot. She still has millions of followers, probably making a ton of money but it gives you a little insight into the psychology that's going on with some of these young kids that have built a platform on TikTok. And I mean, this girl is by no means a unique case. You know, if you were to take away TikTok next week, the amount of kids and teenagers that have built a platform and tied their self-worth and their sense of identity to their social following, their online profile for a lot of these kids, which is TikTok predominantly, uh, it would cause a lot of devastation. And I know you watch a video of this girl and you think about it. it's for the lay person, it's really hard to feel bad for that person. You look at her, you see entitlement, you see privilege, all these things, I understand that. I think I have a little bit of a unique perspective because, you know, I grew up in a time where, you know, when I was going through the, the pivotal developmental stages of my life, middle school, high school, the awkward bullshit, you know, we didn't have this back then. So it was, you know, that's, it's what it was. And now as an adult, you know, in my early twenties, when YouTube came out, I was, I started to upload the covers and kind of got my feet wet in it, but didn't really have any audience to speak of until I was in my thirties, you know, and I'm 35 now. 
uh, and I'm able to do it full time, uh, God willing, and I, I certainly see it as a blessing. But I think about, you know, the implications on a large scale of, of what social media is doing to our younger generations. And, you know, you can only see it at face value right now because there's not been enough data and has not been around long enough to really understand the long term effects of it. But I truly believe that the way apps like TikTok have really gripped you know, the social norms of these young generations and the way that a lot of these kids so heavily rely now on these applications and these vanity metrics and the likes and the views uh, for their own sense of identity, their own self-worth has some pretty, uh, it will have some, some consequences that we're just kind of scratching the surface on. I'm no stranger to the emotional ebbs and flows of living a portion of my life online. I feel very fortunate that I'm able to do this as a job right now that provides for my family. I, I have a lot of fun making videos and experimenting with new things, uh, but I'm, I'm not delusional in the sense that this thing couldn't just disappear overnight, right? That's probably one of the biggest drawbacks is the uncertainty of your future. Although you look around the world after the last couple months and even the jobs you thought were the most secure in the world, COVID-19 hits and you're out of a job. So really in any walk of life and anything you decide to do, there is never any sense of certainty. Tomorrow is always unknown. So the only thing you can do is, you know, do your best in the moment. And I think that one of my biggest, one of the biggest blessings I have is in my job now is that it happened to me later in life. You know what I'm saying? I didn't have an audience to speak of until I was into my 30s. If I was 16, 17, you know, just kind of randomly blew up on this app where I was dancing and lip syncing to some bullshit and all of a sudden millions of people are watching my every move and idolizing me. Like that, that's gonna fuck with your head. I mean, before social media, it was child actors that, you know, they'd be super famous when they were kids and so often they would grow up to just crash and burn and completely shit the bed as humans because their perception probably of reality was so skewed by being introduced to this, you know, insane lifestyle so young. And social media has kind of created that at scale, I think, where so many kids are just cultivating this, uh, are cultivating this warped perception of reality and simultaneously finding all of their their joy and happiness in these you know trivial interactions and these topical kind of affirmations coming from the internet listen i apologize for the tangent i'm certainly not an expert at this stuff i only know what i know through my own experience uh dabbling in the online world and you know being fortunate enough to do this full time for a couple of years now. But I'm not delusional, I know it might not last forever. The only thing I know is that I trust in myself and my ability to work hard, to adapt and to overcome adversity, whatever that may be, whether it means a pivot or whether it means I will be doing something else completely in five to 10 years, that unknown can be scary in this type of work, but I have confidence in myself and my abilities. And to kind of circle back to the whole TikTok thing and how it's infiltrated these younger generations, all I can say, you know, the whole point of this is just to, is to, to, to be self-aware of what's happening, I think, in our society all around us more and more all of us, myself included, we're pinning our joy and our happiness and our sense of self-worth to vanity metrics, whether it's views or likes, um, and to the opinions of other people on the internet. A lot of people we don't know, some people we do. And I think uh, it's just so important sometimes to, to step back from all that and really reevaluate like who you are, what you wanna be, where are you getting your sense of purpose, your sense of joy? I feel like for me personally, I find a lot of my purpose in, you know, being a good husband and being a good father. Uh, you know, my personal journey with fitness and trying to not be a fat bastard because I've been, you know, d struggling with being obese my entire life. And I've had some success there. And then having hobbies and stuff I love to do that other people don't have to know about, things that bring me joy. And then, you know, the online thing is exhilarating. Obviously, it feels good to get views and good comments, but I know that if all that shit got taken away, Tomorrow, if all that shit went away, it would be devastating, yes, but I know that I would be okay because I've already, because I have a foundation, I've built a base to work on. And I, I attribute a lot of that to the fact that, you know, I was born in 85 and I had a lot of time to kind of build that foundation before, you know, having the luxury of having an audience. And I just don't know what it would be like if I was 15 and all of a sudden blew up and had millions of people watching my every move. So my heart goes out sometimes to these younger kids going through this. I know it's hard to empathize as you know a viewer with these people with big audiences. They're making all this money. But I think sometimes it's important to remember that 
behind all that clout and that money is still a human being and should be treated with an ounce of humanity, even though it's so easy to dehumanize people uh, behind a computer screen. Well, things really went off the rails there. One second, we're talking about TikTok being Chinese spyware or not. Next thing you know, I'm on this fucking 15 minute soliloquy about social media and how it affects the younger generations and all. Shut up, Leo, son of a bitch! <laughs> no, I'm just messing around. I hope you guys don't mind me getting introspective once in a while. I try to keep it typically lighthearted and uh, and funny and filled with memes, but, but here we are. I always appreciate your time and thank you for watching. If you have any comments about TikTok or the state of social media and how it's affecting you, your parents, your grandparents, or your kids or your teenage daughter and son, love to hear it in the comments. Um, Stay blessed. Don't forget to hip thrust that motherfucking like button. And if you're new and you subscribe, that would mean the world. We'll see y'all in the next video. Peace. <laughs>